I'm Mark Sadati, and I'm going to be tying the Sadati's Feather Trout Slammer today. Mm, I'm starting out with uh, two hooks, and I have my main hook, which is a four-odd, um, actually it's a, it's a worm hook by Gamagatsu, and my trailer hook is going to be a two-odd Gamagatsu octopus. You could use something like that. This is significant not only because of the size but because of the weight of the hook and the way it's eventually going to affect the action of the fly. So I'm going to uh, connect the front hook to the trailer hook uh, with some 60 pound Berkley steel on plastic coated wire and how I will do that for starters is I'm just going to be of course wrapping the shank of the trailer hook and once I do that to uh, I get a base and I can easily attach the wire that I want to. I go through the hook eye and down so I have that on the the wire on the upper part of the shank and I can tie that in and then what I'll do is I have the wire bent already but I would bend the wire right towards the back of the shank so I can have that go in um, in under so it's on the bottom and I will just attach that like that very quickly you could do that pretty quickly right to whoop, right so that I can I can attach that wire very easily to uh, the trailer hook. Now I haven't finished the windings, winding it as much as I can. I'll show you because I have a, uh, a hook that I've already done already. And uh, so what I would do is I would simply whip finish that and then I would coat it um, with some lacquer and whatever you want to use, whatever kind of uh, lacquer that you want to use. I use hard as nails. What I've done already is I have one of the finished trailers. As you see it's already been coated um, with some lacquer. It's been tied in properly and thoroughly and I have also have the, the length that I want and I've bent the wire already so that I can attach it to the front hook. So as you see what I'll have is I'll have a setup to where I've got the trailer hook behind the main hook and purposely I want the bends of those hooks to be two and a half inches apart. That's significant because I, I want it that way simply because it gives the fly a certain side to side walk the dog action because of the way the weight is distributed and that's going to get a fish that uh, strikes short or a lot of trout end up not engulfing the entire fly or biting the head but they often bite the middle of the fly. Some uh, experts say it's to to stun the fish first or whatever but you hook a lot more fish with a hook behind your trailer or in case you use some sort of shank and then you have the hook off of that. So I'll put my main hook in there and again this is a uh, this is a worm hook. I used to use a Gamagatsu octopus forod. I went to the worm hook because uh, my friend Alex Lotfus uh, simply told me that when he used the worm hook, he hooked a lot more fish uh, on the feather flies that he was using. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing with this front hook as I did with the trailer hook. I'm simply gonna wrap the shank. Yeah, I'm going to wrap, wrap the shank, and then I will attach the wire. Now, I know that in tying this fly, it takes a little time to tie it, but I know that uh, the results that you get with the fly are worth it. No one... So, again, I've got that, so it's straight up, and I prefer my trailer hook to be um, facing upwards rather than downwards primarily because um, that hook that hook point is going to stay 
uh, in the body of the fly, in the feathers, a lot easier than a hook pointing downward. And if the weight of that hook actually pulls it down somewhat, you know, if it actually pulls it down somewhat, I'm still a lot closer to the body of the fly, and I think you can hook the fish a lot better that way. Now, originally, I started tying this fly simply in salt water as a menhaden imitation, and this was, I tied different size slammers, all with feathers from, oh, three and a half to 13 and a half inches, and this, uh, six to eight inch, six to seven and a half inch size, which I later uh, started doing a lot of trout fishing with and having a lot of success with it. Um, this fly, all right. Yeah, this fly usually tied from a six to seven and a half inches long, and I copied an immature menhaden, which we would see in the fall uh, here on the East Coast, especially where I fished locally on Long Island Sound. And then all I do is put that wire up on the top. And I took this fly out. Actually, first when I was in Montana, I used it on the Beaverhead River like it really worked well and then I started fishing in Michigan a lot this was in the late 90s and uh, I brought it out fishing on the Manistee River uh, with my friend guide Russ Madden on his boat and uh, what they were mainly fishing with out in Michigan at the time was were flies that were articulated leeches their flies at the biggest were four and a half inches long this thing was six, six and a half, seven and a half inches long to eight inches long. And um, and their flies were articulated leeches tied with marabou and rabbit. And this fly from the East Coast School of Fly Tying, really, look more like a bayfish. A bayfish, and you'll see it in silhouette as well as in three-dimensional shapes. It looked more like a bayfish, and it moved, had action more like a baitfish. And, you know, it's like, I'm not the first to do that in trout fishing, but it just uh, it wasn't used that much at the time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put these shorter saddle hackles right off the back, and I have two of them. I'm going to tie these right off the back, and this is so I have the exact shape that I wanted. I was a stickler for profile when I tied the fly. I wanted it to look, if I could, exactly like a bunker. Exactly like a little bunker. And uh, I'm going to do that again. And um, so I experimented where, uh, where placement of the materials and uh, what I got was I got what I wanted. I got a very, very close, a menhaden shape. And it turned out that that menhaden shape was really a herring shape. So if you bring this to fresh water, it copied a shad and an alewife wonderfully. All right, so I have that's what I want. I got my feathers, do I want them there? And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add some weight, and weight is significant to the action of this fly. And I've got some .025 weighted wire, and I'm going to wrap that around the hook shank. Now, I don't need it to be right up to the eye of the hook, simply because this, this hook shank is so long. So I really don't need that. And you see, I'm just going to wrap that right along the shank of the hook. And what this is going to do, it's going to function not only as weight that helps get the fly down underneath the water when it's cast. It doesn't necessarily make the fly sink deep, but it gets it underneath the surface quickly uh, where you want a minnow to be, where you want a baitfish pattern to be. And then it's going to help with the action of the fly, as you see, but also it's a base for other materials that are going to be tied on top of it. So that's all I need. I'll wrap that with some .025 weighted wire. And usually I'll cover that just like that. 
And on top of that, or on the bottom of that, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a weighted keel. Now the keel is really, really significant to this fly. What's its significance is, is that it really helps in the, with the action of the fly. Now originally, the bigger bunker patterns, bunker patterns in general, had a tendency to roll when you retrieve them. They were wide profile, they have a tendency to roll over, sometimes just track like that. Well, my friend Tom Piccolo, a, a very a well-known local tire, uh, he told me to put a keel in there. He says, Sadati, put a keel in there, and man, that, tr that fly will track straight wonderfully. I tried doing that, and it really, really worked, but I didn't know about how it would help the action of the fly, especially uh, when it comes to trout fishing. So, what I'll do is I will cut four pieces, four three-eighth inch long pieces of some .030 weighted wire, which, which I have here, you know, and I'm going to cut them with my pliers, but I've done that already. I'm going to uh, tie a piece which is about three-eighths of an inch long. I know that just because I've measured it over the years. I've tied so many of these flies, and I'm going to... I had these already cut and I have four sections and I have them spread out just like that on the bottom of the shank of the hook and I'm going to put them in there right at the back for this particular slammer right at the back and I want them so that as you see you see the uh, wrapped wire gives you a base that you can put those um, four strips in and they lay flat along the bottom just like that. All right, so I'm just going to tie the first layer of the basin or of the keel in. And then all I do is get another four pieces of that weighted wire, four pieces that are three eighths of an inch long, once again. And I'm gonna tie them on top of the other four pieces. So. I'm just going to, they are virtually superimposed, you know, if that's, what, if that's the, the right word. And that's up on top, and I tie those in, as you see. And I wrap those in, and I've got myself a very, very nice keel. And the significance of the keel and the fly, I mean, it's tremendous when... Uh, concerning the action of the fly in a stream. Uh, primarily because not only does it kill the fly, so it tracks in heavy currents, but if that fly is knocked off current, what it'll have a tendency to do, and that happens easily, is that fly goes back. You know, this is my fly, my hand, and it goes back into equilibrium, just like a natural bait fish will do. That's a natural tendency, and that'll trigger strikes from trout and, and with all this weight as it goes through uh, across different current speeds you know different current seams of different speeds that fly will just move and it'll sashay and it'll be swept by the current come in off kilter go back into uh, equilibrium and do this all all like that which is a wonderful strike quote triggering quality for a fly it really gets those fish and uh, so I'm going to turn that over. We got the keel on the fly. So now we're going to put the big feathers, the main part of the fly, right onto the top of the shank. And what I've done is I've already, uh, I've already uh, picked the feathers out. And I've cut them so that ideally, if you see, the stems are all about the same thickness. That's pretty important so they don't twist when you get them on the hook. And as you see, they'll be next to each other just like that. A lot like the, uh, the weighted wire for the keel was. And I'm simply going to put that up on top. Get that there like that. And so as you see, again, you see that all the weighted wire gives you a base even for your uh, for your feathers. And I'm going to tie that in. And I can do that pretty easily. So usually uh, one step leads to the next or, or prepares you for 
the next step or some one of the steps down the line. And okay, so this fly is probably going to be about seven and a half inches long. That's what it looks like, seven, seven and a half inches long, uh, which is good. And once I got that in, I'm going to put some shorter feathers up ahead of that. And what is significant with that is, like I said, I was really a stickler for the profile of the fly. And I wanted an exact uh, herring, menhaden herring imitation, which, like I said, worked wonderfully uh, as an alewife imitation also. So I have two more feathers there, and I'm going to tie them in right in front of those last feathers that I tied in. And, you know, as you see, you can see it already, you have that, that hump there, and you have the same thing on the bottom, so you're getting that fish shape. And again, I was a stickler for that. And that's a really great shape for a herring or a shad or a, or a menhaden both. With trout fishing, we're talking about, you know, shad and alewives. And it's a wonderful uh, alewife imitation just like that. So I have that in and I'm good. Now I'm going to be tying the materials. I've already started it. I'm high tying them. So I'm clumps or feathers along the shank going forward. That's going to give you a little wider profile in the fly. Now I can come back in on the bottom. I can put in my first clump of bucktail. And again, you see I have a base to put that bucktail. And I'm going to make that bucktail probably about that long. And I have that on, on the inside, but I, I will show you what I'll do. And again, I'm going to tie that a little ahead of the feathers that I just tied in. And you see that on the on, on there you can see that you see how long that is that's just a little shorter than those uh, shorter feathers that I tied in originally at that spot and I'm gonna right cut that secure that as best I can and one I don't use glue when I tie I use a lot of wraps and a lot of pressure and it's worked for me some tires like the glue I like to use lots of pressure and wrap. So up ahead of these feathers, again, high tie, low tying, up ahead, I'm going to tie in uh, some, I'm gonna tie in some, uh, some more bucktail, white bucktail. And again, that's not gonna be quite as long as that feather, almost. That's going to give you a wonderful shape, but not only that, it's going to give you a really nice head shape for this fly. And I got that. And I'll tie that off. Or I'll cut that off. Just like that. And again, I'm in good shape. Now, what you're going to see just adding to action of the fly. The significance of high tying and low tying isn't just that you get the, the fish shape that you want or the herring shape that you want, but the ends of all these materials, the ends of, of these two feathers here, the ends of these two feathers, the ends of these four feathers, and I just use four feathers for my tail feathers. I don't need more than that. And the ends of the bucktails, as you go up the fly, the ends all have a wiggle to them. So the fly, as it moves through the water, all the end along the edges of the fly, it's all wiggling. It all has a little bit of that fish attracting action. Makes a difference. Uh, so ahead of this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in, uh, I'm going to put in some peacock curl along the back. So I've already cut some peacock curl and I'm going to place that in above that wrap. And it's not, and the curl isn't going to be as long as the tail feathers. It's going to be a little less. Oh, there's, I don't know, inch and a half, inch, whatever. That's okay. And I'm going to tie that in. And 
notice that I tie my peacock curl in, not at the front of the fly, but more in the middle of the fly. And I found that when I first tied the, the uh, peacock curl in at the front, peacock curl came up and I lost that profile. It would essentially, in the water, oftentimes sort of detach from the, and it wouldn't look like a natural bait fish. When I put the thing, when I put the uh, thing in in the middle of the fly, ahead of more clumps of bucktail, it had that true fish-shaped form, and it had that dark top. You know, it was it was consistent. It was wonderful. So I have that in there. And I'm going to continue with the bucktail on the bottom of the fly. And you see the fly is taking shape pretty quickly. So I have another clump of bucktail on the bottom. Just about, maybe a little shorter, maybe the same length as what was uh, behind it. I'm going to tie that in. And I can easily, let's see, am I right? Yeah, I'm good. Pull up on both ends, and I have another clump in there. And I'm going to anchor like that. I'll press with my two fingers and pull straight down, and that should anchor the materials in uh, pretty strongly. Cut that off. And then I'm simply going to go to the top of the fly. After I have that in, I'm going to tie in some. I'm going to tie more bucktail in. And this time, I'm going to tie some uh, some some darker bucktail. I'm going to get some uh, dark olive. And Oh, I guess that's a little, about as long as the last ones. That, sh that should be good. That looks good. All right, I'm going to put that on top, up there. And if I can get that over like that. You see how that blends in so well with that peacock curl. And, yeah, I can. As long as I anchor that in and I'm good and, and you'll see when that flies in the water you have that true dark line as it were on top like a natural bay fish nothing detaches you'll have that wonderful silhouette and then I just continue doing uh, similar things and what I'll do up ahead now because I'm almost near the end the end of the fly and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some flashaboo on the sides of the fly. And I usually don't use a lot of flash. So I have some here. And I'm going to maybe use half of that. Whoop. If, I, if I can. Just a few strands of flash. I, I usually don't use a lot. I'll use a few. And I'll put them and they won't be as long as the fly itself they're going to be just a little shorter than the length of the fly in there like that and uh, uh, I'm fine I can tie in that in too and if I want to go and, and either flip that back like that so I can secure it Sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't. That's okay. I usually don't have a lot of flash on the fly. And then go to the other side, and I'll do something very similar. Sometimes I tie the fly with, with no flash. Sometimes if I just get a feeling that I need more flash, I'll tie more flash. Sometimes if, I, if I'm on the stream and I think the trout are a little spooky from too much flash, if that happens, uh, 
I'll simply pull the flash off, I'll pull some strands off, or I'll cut some off. Sometimes I have a pair of scissors with me, and, uh, and I'll do that. Okay, so up on top of that, on the sides, to get this fly having a little better of a three-dimensional shape, right? I mean, it just doesn't have the profile, but you want it to be thick enough. So if a fish looks up from underneath, then, you know, it's going to have that fish shape also, and they'll see that. Bob Popovics may be very conscious of that, co of that concept. And I didn't mention it from the start, but of course, this Sadati Slammer, the Feather Slammer, is tied uh, in the Deceiver style, you know what I mean? But, as you see, it just has so many uh, intricate attributes. Mm, so, I'm going to take some white bucktail and for, with a smaller clump. Not quite as much as many hairs. And I'm going to put that over the, the flash. I'm going to put that over the flash. And, whoop. and if, I, if I can get there, all right, that's pretty cool. And as you see, I'm going to have it over the side, and I'll cut that off. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side of the fly. Again, all this does, it makes it look prettier, but also it gives it more of a three-dimensional shape which uh, I think can be important. You know, now we're tying flies. I mean, you, you've seen it more, even more recently than, uh, than way back when. I originally tied this fly, this pattern, in 1991, and I added the trailer hook uh, a few years after that uh, when I was fishing in Michigan. And uh, I had three, well, I had two eight pound browns about 20 inches, 28 inches long. Then I had a 30 incher come after the fly and I didn't hook any of them. This happened in two days on the Osable and then on the Manistee River. I missed every fish because they grabbed the fly in the middle and I had the hook in the head. I said, forget about it. I'm going to put a trailer hook in that fly from now on when I'm trout fishing. And uh, it worked. All right, so we're going to finish up, and we're going to put our last low tie, as it were, high tie and low tying, um, right up by the front of the fly, and you know, I'll just wrap that in, wrap that in, and like that, anchor it, and. I cut that off. I'm going to put another clump right there on the, the upper end of the fly. I'll get some, uh, some olive, some olive bucktail, and this is finishing the fly up for the most part. do is clean that off like that and then I'm virtually finished with the fly now now I just have to uh, craft the shape of the head and then uh, put the eyes on and we're done so what I have is a fly that has Great fish shape, great fish action, you know, silhouette, three-dimensional shape, action going across currents, action going up and down. The keel also helps that fly bob up and down, sort of like this as you retrieve it. And one more significant thing, and this was a surprise that I got when I put that keel hook in there. I'm going to tie off right here. When I put that keel in, I had the wonderful surprise of the fly. 
in that your whip finish. And I have a wonderful surprise of added walk the dog side to side action when I retrieve this thing in sharp jerks on a tight line because what happened okay there's the there's there's the you know there's the finished fly but what I had when I would strip that fly and it was simply because of the weight of the hook and the and how far it was behind the front hook but when I stripped it the fly would do that and do that and do that so that an extra strike triggering action which which made it you know an even more potent trout, uh, trout fly so now all I have to do is put the eyes on that thing and I'm finished okay so we uh, got some glue and we're going to uh, I, I prefer to, to use shoe goo but um, you know I'm using a substitute today and I'm just going to put that fly on that eye on there and make sure that it's above the that it's above the uh, the keel in in that and I may have to just hold that there a little longer and so that it adheres to the base below the hairs not just on the hairs if if we can get that and then I'm simply I'll do that uh, I'll do that to the uh, the eye on, on the other side also. We'll do that to the eye on the other side also and uh, see if we can get that done. And then all I have to do once my once my eyes are, are on is yeah so you see that we got the eye on one side and got the eye on uh, on the other side if I have to add a little more glue I will and so I'm pretty good there just about like there and essentially you have a you have a finished fly the uh, the eyes almost make the thing come alive you know and then I'll put some uh, lacquer on my uh, you know just add some lacquer there to my uh, wraps up at the head and I'm essentially I'm essentially uh, yeah I'm essentially I'm essentially finished. I might have to just put a little. Uh... Yeah. I'm. Uh... Yeah, I'm pretty good. All right, that's the uh, the Sadati Slammer. I've got uh, the ion, and it's all complete. And uh, hope that uh, you can tie some up and that you'll uh, catch some real big trout on them, you know? Thanks a lot.